30 Royal Rules Broken by Meghan Markle Even though Meghan Markle has only been a part of the royal family for a little over two years, she has already breached numerous royal laws, both official and unofficial. Yes, some of these rules are really strict and borderline absurd, such as let the woman wear all black if she wants to, or close the car door she just exited. <laughs> but at the end of the day, the royals still have their own customs, and people are supposed to adhere to them. Number 1. Her legs were crossed as she sat. Every time a royal woman sits down, it is customary for them to do so with their legs crossed and their knees touching. Megan has broken these rules, which is okay. Number 2. She donned Yore for Archie's christening. Kate Middleton, who has worn Alexander McQueen to all three of her children's christenings, often chooses a British designer. But she chose Dior because she admires Maria Grazia Chiuri, the creative director. 3. She went to a royals only gathering. Meghan and Harry attended the Commonwealth Youth Forum in April 2018 together. Meghan was then just Harry's fiance, and typically only members of the royal family are allowed to attend this ceremony. 4. Archie's birth was announced on Instagram by her and Harry. The announcement of the birth of a royal child is customarily made on a ceremonial easel outside Buckingham Palace. However, Meghan and Harry decided to share the information on Instagram. Bold! 5. She skipped pantyhose. Meghan changed things up right away when she announced her engagement to Prince Harry. Hold your gasps, please. Meghan decided not to wear pantyhose for their formal photo shoot. While most women under the age of 85 might not find this noteworthy, a royal would find it extremely rare. They are worn by Princess Diana, Kate Middleton, and Queen Elizabeth. Therefore, even if it may not be a formal rule, it is undoubtedly a custom. 6. She shut the door to her car. The majority of the time that royals act usually is when they aren't appearing in public. The internet erupted when Meghan shut her car door at her first solo engagement as the Duchess of Sussex. The reason this is significant, according to an etiquette expert, is because dignitaries and members of the royal family typically have a staff member open and lock their car doors for them. It's simply how things are. Go! 7. She shut the car door before the Queen got into a car. When Meghan and the Queen attended their first official function together in June 2018, Meghan was unsure whether to board the vehicle first or last and was overheard asking the monarch, What's your preference? The Queen then mentioned for Meghan to enter the car first so she could take her customary seat, which is behind the driver. It came close, but it was successful. 8. She provided her autograph. For the simple reason that it makes her handwriting available to individuals who might use it for evil reasons, royals aren't meant to sign autographs. But during a January visit to Wales, Meghan breached this rule or came up with an ingenious way around it. Megan scribbled, Hi Caitlin, instead of signing her name when 10 year old Caitlin Clark requested her signature. Caitlin didn't care if Megan spelled her name incorrectly because she was so ecstatic. Autograph before, she told reporters, This is going to make everyone jealous. 9. She held hands with Prince Harry in public. Although there isn't a set law regarding PDA, since royals are employed as ambassadors for the monarchy, they often keep it to a minimum. However, you'll notice that Meghan and Prince Harry frequently hold hands, whether they're making a formal appearance or being photographed by the media in public. This is partial since Harry, who is sixth in line for the throne, has a smaller duty to preserve the monarchy's reputation than his elder brother. 10. She shares her political views. The British royal family is a non-political institution, hence members aren't allowed to express political views. However, Meghan has occasionally disregarded this restriction. She first supposedly revealed that she was pro-choice before adamantly claiming to be feminist, which in my opinion shouldn't be a political position. The Duchess seems glad that Ireland wants to decriminalize abortion, at least according to Irish Senator Catherine Noon, who tweeted that she spoke with Meg about it. Nobody removed the tweet afterward, possibly recognizing their error. 11. She and Harry crashed Instagram. When Meghan and Harry unveiled their official Instagram account, they quickly received so many follower requests that the entire app crashed. Since then, Meghan has given the couple's account her spin by showcasing different causes and sharing motivational quotations. 
She even left a positive comments on William and Kate's birthday Instagram post for Prince Louis, which some criticized for breaking palace protocol. 12. She didn't share any details about her birth plan. Unlike previous royal women, Meghan decided to withhold information about her birth plan from the public and instead issued a statement that read, Their Royal Highness have taken a personal decision to keep the plans around the arrival of their baby private. The Duke and Duchess look forward to sharing the exciting news with everyone once they have had an opportunity to celebrate privately as a new family. 13. Wearing wedges and taking them off Occasion Royal Tour of Australia, Fiji, Tonga and New Zealand Visit with local surfing community group One Wave on Bondi Beach. Broken Rule Is there a standard that royals must follow at all times? Keeping their shoes on, particularly when traveling to other nations. The royal family has long upheld the tradition, as seen by Kate Middleton keeping her shoes on at Manly Beach in 2014, and Princess Diana doing the same at NSW Beach in Terrigal in 1983. Not Meghan, though. During a visit with her husband, Prince Harry, the Duchess defied convention by taking off her Castaner espadrille wedges at Bondi Beach in October. But obviously, it's a beach. Additionally, breaching two rules at once since wedges are allegedly discouraged. 14. Donning trousers and a hat at Wimbledon. Occasion. The 2018 Wimbledon Women's Finals, when Angelique Kerber defeated Serena Williams. Rule broken. Meghan Markle wore a striped Ralph Lauren shirt and a pair of white leggings to the Wimbledon Women's Finals. Kate Middleton and her sister-in-law Meghan chose to wear dresses and skirts to the ceremony, because it has been said that Queen Elizabeth II wants the women in the family to do so for important occasions. Additionally, Markle donned a hat to the occasion, which is improper, according to Hello. She considerately carried it instead. According to the Wimbledon website, ladies are asked not to wear hats as they tend to obscure the vision of those seated behind them. 15. Accessorizing with a cross body bag Occasion Visiting Edinburgh Castle in the Scottish capital Rule broken According to Mail Online, William Hansen, an expert, it is customary to wait for a member of the royal family to extend their hand before shaking another person's, whether they are related by blood or marriage. Because of this, Kate Middleton frequently chooses a clutch, and many thought that Meghan Markle's February cross-body purse was an infraction of royal custom. It freed up her hand so she could shake hands and take gifts from well-wishers in Scotland. The type of bag that royals are permitted to carry is not strictly regulated. It is vital to remember this. It's more about personal comfort and what works for every given individual on the day, Victoria Arbiter, a royal expert, told Insider. 16. Wearing Ripped Jeans Occasion, the Invictus Games in Toronto. Some people might recall that Prince Harry and Marco clasped hands for the first time in public during these games. Needless to say, this was a couple of months before he put a ring on it. It might be referred to as the one where Marco wore ripped jeans by more critical individuals. The royal family still views them as being exceedingly informal, to the extent that one of the only occasions when they are appropriate to wear them is when walking the royal dogs out of the sight of paparazzi cameras, we assume. 17. Meghan paints her nails burgundy. For almost 30 years, Queen Elizabeth has worn the same $8 nail paints. Essie's ballet slippers is a light pink polish that is nearly sheer. According to the brand's website, Queen Elizabeth's hairdresser requested a bottle of the polish in a letter in 1989, as it was the only color Her Majesty would wear. She won't merely wear it. Buckingham Palace is the only place she will allow it. Colored nail polish is prohibited under a rule that, according to OK Magazine, because it was considered vulgar. 18. Meghan wore a sleeveless dress to her first Trooping the Color. On June 9th, Queen Elizabeth's birthday, Meghan Markle made her Buckingham balcony debut. Her pale pink Carolina Herrera design gown, which had an off-the-shoulder style, was not quite princess-worthy. The Duchess of Sussex's attire was swiftly criticized by tabloids as a deviation from unwritten royal convention, with page 6 asserting, Fashion tradition usually dictates that royal women do not wear off-shoulder or other more revealing styles. People claim that for the previous seven years, Kate Middleton has worn dresses with sleeves that go past the elbow, 
just like Princess Diana did when she attended the festivities. Let's not get our pantyhose, which Meghan Markle is currently sporting, twisted. Fashion rules were meant to be broken. 19. Meghan's coat of arms does not include her family name. Other awesome royal benefits, including your very own insignia, come along with a tiara and the title. The Duchess of Sussex has a personalized coat of arms now that she is a recognized member of the British monarchy. Before a royal wedding, the father of the bride is traditionally given a symbolic presence. Kate Middleton's coat of arms not only depicts the Middleton family, but also her mother Carol's maiden name, Goldsmith. However, the palace has opted to solely give Markle the honor in light of the newest member of the family. However, the coat of arms honors Markle's ancestry. The Duchess's native state of California is symbolized by the unique design's two golden rays, sunshine, and the blue background, the Pacific Ocean, according to Kensington Palace. 20. She had a two-ring royal wedding ceremony. Royal males typically don't wear wedding bands once they get married. After marrying the brides, Harry's grandpa, father, and brother all decided to continue this custom by foregoing the wearing of rings. Markle and Harry, however, decided to buck the trend and exchange rings at the ceremony that they will both wear going forward. This represents marriage equality and is a forward-thinking move for the monarchy. 21. Christmas with the Queen Last December, Kensington Palace formally announced what we had all been hoping for weeks. An unmarried Meghan Markle would be spending Christmas with her prince. Given that Markle has not yet entered the royal family through marriage, her invitation was, of course, a departure from royal custom. However, it appears that Prince Harry is an exception to the rule, as a representative for the palace told AP. You can expect to see the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, Prince Harry, and Miss Markle at Sandringham on Christmas Day. 22. They tied the knot in May. A spring wedding is an ideal event, right? Wrong. It turns out that Queen Victoria, the prince's great-great-great-grandmother, would not have approved of marriage in May. The late great monarch bought into the superstitious chants, marry in May and rue the day, and believed it was unlucky to get married in the fifth month of the year. 23. Meghan's been married before. Meghan had a committed relationship with producer Trevor Engelson before she started dating Harry. After seven years of courting, the Hollywood power couple wed in 2011 and separated in August 2013 Engelson is now developing a television series about a man who must share custody of his child after his ex-wife weds into the British royal family. The plot, according to Deadline, is as follows. Divorce is hard. Sharing custody is harder. Sharing custody with the British royal family when your wife marries a prince and the unforgiving spotlight of London's tabloid media is next level. Gross. 24. Meghan isn't Angelican. Royals were not allowed to wed Roman Catholics for many years. The Act of Settlement of 1701 was amended in 2015 to permit interfaith marriages between British royals. Even though it has been widely publicized that Markle's father is Jewish and she went to an all-girls Catholic high school in Los Angeles, she has never actually stated her religious beliefs in public. Meghan will be baptized and confirmed in the Church of England before her wedding to Prince Harry at Windsor Castle. Markle pays homage to Queen Elizabeth, who serves as the sovereign and is known by the title Defender of the Faith and Supreme Governor of the Church of England. 25. They're all about the PDA. Okay, so it's a bit excessive to refer to a handheld PDA as such. However, technically speaking, it is an act of public affection. The royal family has historically avoided public displays of love at official engagements because of their role as working representatives of the British monarchy. However, there are no particular anti-PDA laws. For instance, in the last 10 years, Prince William and Kate Middleton have been pictured holding hands less than a dozen times. This unwritten rule has almost always been broken by Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. The couple kissed when they appeared in front of the public for the first time. They appeared together during the Invictus Games in Toronto and were captured doing so. Markle and Harry were unable to keep their hands off of one another, even when they went out together as an engaged couple. Not that we have anything negative to say. Please, have more PDA-heavy moments. 26. Meghan's Vanity Fair Cover Kate Middleton appeared in British Vogue, 
so it's not unusual for a royal to appear on the cover of a magazine. However, for royal watchers, her decision to discuss her relationship with Harry before their engagement came as a big shock. The main lesson to be learned is that Prince Harry and Markle are deeply in love and aren't ashamed to show it to the world. We are two people who are happy and in love, she said. We were very quietly dating for about six months before it became news, and I was working during that whole time, and the only thing that changed was people's perception. Nothing changed about me. I'm still the same person that I am, and I've never defined myself by my relationship. 27. She and Harry's wedding cake wasn't fruitcake. The wedding cake for Meghan and Harry will be created by Claire Patak, Kensington Palace said in March. With the taste, the palace tweeted, Prince Harry and Miss Markle have asked Claire to create a lemon elderflower cake that will incorporate the bright flavors of spring. It will be covered with buttercream and decorated with fresh flowers. Yum! To honor a particular royal occasion, such as a wedding or baptism, a fruitcake opens a new tab. A sweet dish made with candied or dried fruits, nuts, and spices is customarily served. Even though Meghan and Harry's cake contains lemons, it doesn't quite pass muster. 28. She didn't belong to the Church of England British royals are accepting of various traditions, but belongings to the Church of England is the standard, and according to People, members of the royal family cannot be Catholic to continue in the line of succession. Due to regulations that were changed in 2013, people in the line of succession are now permitted to marry whoever they choose, regardless of their religious affiliations. Thus, Meghan won't be affected by this. According to reports, Meghan attended a Catholic school, but in March, she underwent Church of England baptism, maybe out of respect for the Queen. 29. She's wearing an all-diamond ring Although diamond engagement rings are undoubtedly not common, the royals tend to prefer gemstones. The engagement rings of the Queen Mother, Princess Anne, Princess Diana, and now Kate Middleton all contain sapphires. Princess Margaret and Sarah Ferguson both received ruby rings in the meantime. 30. She wears black, a lot. Like wedges, the color black is forbidden among the royal family. Generally, it is thought that black is not usually worn unless in mourning, although Diana, Prince of Wales, did occasionally wear it for evening functions and the Duchess of Cambridge has been known to do so, the English Manor Chief Executive Alexander Masservy told InStyle. But the Duchess of Sussex always dresses in black. On her first solo excursion, she was dressed in a black Givenchy gown. She didn't wear tights when attending the Hamilton charity performance in a black tuxedo dress. She attended the Wellchild Awards in London a week later while wearing a black Altuzara outfit. Notably, each of the three outings supported charitable causes. Why is that? Kate Holler, a color psychologist, has a hypothesis. Whilst black has many different traits, looking at these specific events she attended, they all have one thing in common. The occasions when she is choosing to wear black suggest she isn't seeking to be the center of attention. She is okay with being in the background. Black is her way to deflect attention off herself and onto the causes she is supporting, putting them in the spotlight, Holler told fabulously. What are your opinions on this? Do you think the rules are too strict? Do let us know in the comments below. If you liked the video, do give us a thumbs up, share the video, and subscribe to our channel. We keep coming up with interesting videos like this, so make sure you hit the bell icon below to never miss anything from us.